Hello, and welcome to the Purity Pulse podcast, your go-to podcast for everything natural health and everything purity life. I'm Erin Macklin. And I'm Julie Drapeau. All right. Today, we are going to go through our regular weekly check-ins. We're going to do a really interesting interview with Brad Black from EO Products. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go through our usual new to purity life. What's new with you, Erin? Oh my goodness. So, in our family, we celebrate Christmas. Yes. Uh, and that's, phew, time's a ticking right around the corner. I know. Oh it's my goodness. The last days now. You're right? Yes. So, the kids are still in school. The kids go in school right through to the end of this week. Really? So, yeah, just with the way the calendar landed this year, they go right through, wow. right up until Christmas. So. But they watch movies and they do... Oh, yeah, do, I mean, realistically, yeah. what are they actually just accomplishing in school that. right now? Not <laughs> a whole it. lot. I yeah. think there's probably a lot of popcorn and, and yes, movies and, and whatnot. Ease so. them in the holiday yeah. season, right? <laughs> They'll be getting a lot of popcorn and movies once they get off of school as well. <laughs> I love holiday movies. I could watch oh. holiday movies oh, through the whole season. Anyways. I know. <laughs> but so yeah, true. no. So it's, it's a bit crazy. It's all the last minute stuff. Uh, teacher gifts and everybody else gifts and food and and prepping for hosting and planning and all that kind of stuff. So but you're, you're a, a bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, you've done so by. well with you do so well with all the CHFA prep. It's just like another oh, yeah. CHFA coming. <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what the holidays are at my house. Just a whole other event, a whole other trade show event. Exactly. Yeah, what that's what I'm saying. What are things well, looking like? Um, I love a uh, holiday season and we celebrate Christmas as well. Um, being a Quebecer, we love, I love snow. Yeah. Um, but saying this, we're going to uh, celebrate in Vegas. So right. there won't be much snow, although you can find places that you can find snow. You can find anything <laughs> there. So, hey, uh, that that's Maybe there. But snow. Yeah. But right now, actually, what I wanted to say that I'm doing, and it's always working towards the holiday season. That's the time where I sort of sit back and, and if evaluate the year mm -hmm. and take the time to really absorb everything that happened. Yeah. Because as you know, you know, we go through the year and it's like, go, 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 yeah. go. From and then the next to the next. Yeah. To the next. And yeah. it's holiday season. And uh, I think I've been a bit inspired with the uh, gentleman that we're going to interview today. Um, and and I, I was looking at some books to read. So that's what I go through. Like I look at my year and then what book I'm going to read during the holiday. And I can set myself for what's coming in the next year. Right. So create um, a tone. Yeah, exactly. So different than yours, that is go, 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 go. It's rare for me to like just slow down a minute and pick something that uh, will sort of create, yeah, my next year uh, yeah. plan. Yeah. So that's what I'm into right now. And uh, yeah, I found a very good book with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh -huh. um, yeah, The Seven Tools for Life. And I just start to like look through it a little bit quickly. And he's talking about there's no plan B. So right. if you decide to do something, it's plan A. And connection with our uh, our guest today, Brad Black, right. they talk about that in an interview. So I won't say much more, but it's sort of all linked together. So a long check-in, but that's my check-in of the, the week. The yes, re the reading that you've got coming up for your yes. holiday vacation. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Let's here we go. <laughs> So today, Erin, we have a special guest uh, with us, Brad Black, a president and co-founder of EO, uh, Essential Oil, a brand that we've been distributing for many years. For quite a while, yeah. And um, and we're very lucky to, to have Brad here that will talk about the company, but it came to an idea from, we were traveling, Matthew and I, and uh, uh, Matthew sent me a, a podcast, and I started to listen to it about the story about EO and all it came about, and to be honest, I had a little bit of, you know, the knowledge right but I didn't know that and Brad will talk more about <laughs> this but going from a uh, clothing to essential oil and the whole story behind so I said you know we need to have him we hear on it. our podcast yeah uh, to share with our retailers and listener this amazing story of there's no plan B it's only plan A yeah. so welcome to our podcast Brad and uh, and enlighten us on the story and how you know who what is EO and how it came about and the story behind all of that well thank you so much um, you know we've had 
such a wonderful relationship with y'all at Purity Life and um, all the fabulous customers and consumers up in Canada. Um, you know, and thank you for all of your support and um, kind of collaboration in all of our journey down the path of how we're making money, how we choose to engage with community. So it's been a wonderful partnership. So thank you. Um, you know, it's really, uh, we spend our day making products and uh, we do hear the question and, you know, the comments like, wow, it's kind of a cool story. And so um, it's an area that we need to work on marketing a little bit more uh, yet. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's a good story. So Susan, uh, my uh, co-founder, and we are co-CEOs still after about uh, 30 years, we met in 1988 in San Francisco. And um, we quickly became friends because we're just aligned in terms of life and friends and families, our philosophies. And, um, and then in the early 90s, we started a date. She was uh, distributing a line out of the UK called Neil's Yard Remedies. Uh, I was uh, designing and manufacturing an active wear clothing brand called Maniac. And, um, and then in 1995, we were both in a transition point and decided to work with each other. We were dating and, um, you know, in like the agrarian societies, when we had farms, families, you know, raise their families, their kids, they work together. And that was kind of our dream. Our, our intentions. And, and so that's what we, that's how, that's how we started making products for ourselves, for our family, for our kids. Right. And, um, and what got us really into natural, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't the movement because there wasn't the movement then, uh, it was mm -hmm. because at our, all of our friends and family, our kids again, were using the product. So why wouldn't we use essential oils as opposed to synthetic fragrances? Yeah. Why didn't we, you know, be a steward of, of the earth? Uh, because, you know, it's it's like it just seemed like that just made so much more sense. So that was kind of the early steps of EO. Yeah. And, and I liked in the uh, one of the podcasts that how you talk about that, um, like, it's not life balance or it, it was integrated that has that was part of your life and that's that's something to be said and also that you were as you mentioned pioneer you were ahead of what was going on in the market and I think even your packaging even back in time was if we look at compared to the like the natural I would call it non um, in a non bad way but the flip flop times you were ahead of having that nice already packaging that was speaking to everybody so um so kudos to you to have seen that and wanting to share uh to share those products with uh, with the world <laughs> that's good thank you yeah yeah we started you know it was uh we really kind of started in the gift market and then as we became more uh, committed and, and knowledgeable, you know, we were very ignorant that um, the gift market uh, really pays a lot more attention to the visual aspects of, right. of packaging. Right. And um, however, we found that the customers and, and the consumers were less excited about the natural, uh, organic or responsible business. And so that's what really got us into our industry, which we love so much now is we yeah. just were aligned a lot more with, um, you, you know, that natural philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about a little bit of how you uh, persisted, because to me, this is um, this is a true testament. As I said, there's in, in again, in one of the uh, interview, you were saying there's there was no plan B. It was only it needed to work. <laughs> And and you were mentioning like there was some years that were difficult and we know ourselves too, like we have to deal with certain uh, banners or groups that are more costly and it's very difficult to to make a living out of this. So um, talk to us a little bit about that journey and how you just persisted and, and what drove you to continue to persist. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, we say that we're not great business people. Um Yet we do say that we're great not going out of business people. <laughs> I like that. That's, I remember that. <laughs> well, life has many wonderful gifts. 
and um, as well as bumps in the road. Obstacles, as we know in life, are are common. And so we stayed committed to our philosophies and we stayed very involved in uh, in the business. Uh, we have a basic understanding of what it takes to be successful and then how to pivot. And so um, there was never a plan B because, well, we didn't have the option for a plan B. It's expensive to kind of close down option plan, you know, one. And so we just, you know, just kept on pivoting. And we really believe that the path, you know, it's kind of like the more resistance that you get um, is can sometimes be validating. And so um, it, it was really a um, lot of pivots in the road. And, and, and we just kind of stayed committed to that philosophy. And is it why that you created also the everyone sort of category of products? Because you had EO more premium, I would say. Is it, would that be correct to say? And then you came on with that more um, broad stream, still the same quality. Uh, but talk to us a little bit about the why behind that and what's different between everyone and EO, the original. So EO, we founded it in 1995. And... Um, and kind of our best thinking over the years um, went into the creative pot. And in 2012, we created the Everyone brand, kind of taking our best thinking. And at the time, um, I think the really the uh, consumers wanted a, a more value in products. And our son came home and was buying other products than ours. And we yeah. were, are you kidding me? <laughs> Going on. <laughs> and, well, they were like, you know, it's they're it, they're they're too expensive. So EO was was selling like an eight ounce bottle of lotion for eight ninety nine US. Um, and so we wanted to come out with a more value. You have a product right in front of you. You can see yeah. on the left there that lotion yeah. is thirty two ounces. And when we launched it, it was nine ninety nine uh, US for um, that's a, a, a bottle of lotion. So we simplified formulas. Yeah. And um, and really wanted to drive a product that was based more on value, and um, and really more uh, responding to the industry and again consumers for products like uh, everyone. It's a good pivot because if we think of the market right now, you know, post COVID, you have, you know, customers and we see that across Canada, you have customers that are wanting, they don't want to give up on the premium, you know, the, the rose essential oils, which we know is not cheap. So the price of the product will be more expensive, but then you also have customers that are looking for natural at a good price, but they want their whole family to be able to use the product. So again, I think you were ahead of the, the trend there. And I think there's so much more. Uh, and I'm, I'm so we're so happy that you're on this podcast, because I think there's so much more and people should have more of uh, everyone in their home because of that. Too. And I would say like, they've done such a good job with the every line too, because it's it's I mean, it doesn't look like, it looks like a high quality brand still, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're still getting such a high quality product, but yeah. it's still so accessible, which is, which is a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. Is Yeah. Th thank you. We, um, you know, I, b business, business was created um, to be in service to people. Uh, it started out as barter. You know, you had an extra apple pie and, you know, you wanted to swap it for butter or <laughs> milk or something. And and then it was developed. And then instead of swapping eggs, you were you were paying some kind of currency, uh, a different kind of currency, monetary. And so we um, we want to be in service uh, to to people through the vehicle of business and uh Everyone of uh, in in all regards should have access to really well made products. Our 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 all of our bottles are made from PCR or recycled content. We don't charge more for that, and, and um, you know we we don't use synthetic ingredients. And so uh, we we really wanted to um, charge a very reasonable price. We've reduced our margins to really make it accessible. Um, Walmart, for instance, I believe 50% of their customers pay in cash because in a sense they can't afford a credit card. Right. And so we wanted to really make it available to 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 them and, and to, again, everyone. 
So, um, yeah, thank you for, for the support. Canada has really um, been a great support for us for the Everyone brand I I as well. And we have some treats that are coming um, down the road next year. I think that's that's so great that idea that you guys have of of really being in service to other people. I think that's just such an inspiring viewpoint. It's so nice to hear that, especially from companies you know the size of your own. Often that's kind of something that goes to the wayside. So to hear you say how much of a big focus, how much of a thing that is for for you and your team, I mean it's it's heartwarming to be honest. Mm -hmm. I know that. Um, you're pretty passionate, I think, about keeping your man manufacturing to yourselves as well. Can you talk a little bit about what that means to you? Yeah, you know, you if you want to go buy vegetables, you want to be able, you want to buy it from a farmer and um, someone who grows it, N not necessarily a slick marketing person out of New York City. And I believe in um, what manufacturing brings us is so much knowledge. And uh, when we choose our suppliers, when we choose each ingredient, when we create our formulas, there's just a depth of knowledge that we have to engage in so that we know that the product is made as intended. Uh, you know, GMO has been a, um, a huge passion for us. We were the first certified uh, as a body care brand, non-GMO. And um, it's surprising where GMO shows up in ingredients that you wouldn't even know. Uh, vitamin yeah. E, for instance, um, is is Big one. Time. So that's what that's one of the areas that manufacturing brings us. The other is is that it does keep um, the price down a little bit more, rather right. than having someone else manufacture the products for, for us. Excellent. Should we get into some uh, some uh, fun questions? Yeah, like to let's go do through? a bit of rapid fire. Yes, let's go, Aaron. So you've been around for nearly 30 years now. I know you've probably hit a lot of obstacles along the way. Uh, what do you think is the, the largest obstacle that you've overcome that's kind of made you the proudest of what you've been able to accomplish? Well, you know, there's, there's, there's so many. Um, the one that pops up in my mind is the one that I kind of manage and engage in every day. And that is, is as we scale, can we stay true to our philosophies of what is responsible business and the demands in, in the world um, really change with scale. And so that's the area that I really uh, find is a huge challenge. Uh, sometimes we'll bring in a new product or like with the everyone that you have there, yeah. uh, there, there weren't um, bottles uh, initially available in made in PCR so that we would start a relationship with a bottle manufacturer and perhaps buy virgin plastic and say that in nine months or a year, we want it to all be PCR or re uh, made from recycled content. So it's the challenge of staying true uh, to your values of what's important to, to us mm -hmm. in a business. But you could say that in life, you know, or as yeah. you raise a child, same thing. It's like just that constant cycle back of we're in service and we take care of the people in terms of how we choose the ingredients. And we try to really take care of the planet by being, you know, a zero waste manufacturer, for instance. Yeah, very good. Great values. I love that. So since we have uh, a lot of retailers listening to uh, the podcast, is there any message or something that you would like to tell them um, related to your brand or, or because they're carrying your products? Any special message? Yeah, I guess the first message is pretty general and um, it goes back to just being in service um, to people and to the, our our earth and, and um, it's really what is probably one of the reasons that we all are in this industry. And, and so curate your, your, the products that you sell and know who owns the companies and what their intentions are. And I know that, you know, you can't be perfect across the board. However, um, I think that that's, I think that that's really the first part is, is the philosophy of, of really being in service. Um, I think making products is something that's really important. Again, like farmers making their own. Uh, and so, uh, we, uh, we, we want to collaborate and, um, be a part of the process and we need, uh, your retailers, um, and purity to really engage with all of the consumers in Canada. So 
please let us know. You know, LeBeau is our uh, broker up there, and um, yes, yeah, and 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 let's collaborate. And you know, how can we support everyone in the process to do our best? I think a, a key point here is that, and you said that right at the start, is sharing the story. And I think we need to find ways, like we have today the chance to have you and we'll be sharing this story. But I think, um, you know, to, to have you coming to Canada and going across and speaking to stores, I think your, the story is so wonderful and, and your values and what you aim for will really speak to not only the retailers, but their, their uh, customers. And, you know, we're talking about maybe developing some POP material that we can have on the shelf and explain a little bit, you know, what the brand about because when you have customers walking the aisle they look at the bottle they touch the product and then they smell it the price is the price good for me but when you have a little bit more behind and I think that uh, the the world I would say is looking for more brand that their intention is to service and help the community which you're yeah all we, about. we've talked previously yeah. about the values-based consumer and how yes. important that is and when you can kind of add that on as an additional feature to a product yes. that that the values of the founders and the values of the company actually match their own having that message out there so then the consumer can see oh yeah, I want to be a part of that. I really want to support that. These are values that I share. Yeah. Getting that message out there for sure, I think yeah. for everybody is going to be super important. Yeah, so we'll we'll reach out to uh, to you and Lebo on that. We have lots of ideas for you. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that's that's a wonderful area. You know, COVID uh, for many of us was uh, really a struggle, and um, and we're hopefully mostly out of the woods now and uh another thing that really is in store for next year is just our recommitment to uh, marketing and putting more money in that regard so uh the area of support more information uh will be available yes music to our ears and uh, and maybe one last question to you. We know you're uh, you're a very passionate individual. Is there any uh, any things that are coming that you're very excited about, and could be out of EO or something you want to share with us? Um, you know, just um, really growing um, and 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 evolving in a, in a positive way. You know, our, our world is very, um, complicated and get, in, can get compressed and, um, there can be a lot of joy in, in the small things. And so, uh, yeah. I think the marketing information is important to try to get the word out. However, you know, just a simple breath of a beautiful scent that's from plants is a really a wonderful way to start the day or biting into a fresh apple or a lot of the different products that um, y'all sell. So I, I think it's really just, you know, really staying committed to all of our, all of our passions and um, collectively really try to bring more sunshine into, uh, in, well, into the world through a lot of the beautiful products that we make. We what absolutely a, need all of that. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful sentiment. Thanks for leaving us with that. That's Yes. Thank you so much, Brad, for your time. We really appreciate and definitely for all the, the listener and the viewers. Stay tuned because I can feel that we're gonna, it's going to be a big year for EO coming and we'll be working all together to make sure that we spread that beautiful story and those amazing products of yours. So thank you for your time. Very much appreciated. Thanks so much, Brad. You're so welcome, um, and thank you for reaching out and, again, for all the support. All right, so it is time for New to Pure Life. Yes. So I want to take a look at this new brand mm -hmm. that we just picked up called Bob Snail. Fantastic. Uh, it's really neat, actually. So the ingredients are super, super simple. So it's... Um, fruit based yes. and they have kind of fruit strips and they've got fruit rolls and gummy kind of style things super clean nut free kids love them uh there's no added sugar yeah the sugar is from the fruit basically yeah, right? that's what like it you is you don't need to put more sugar into into them anyways yeah um but fun for kids like look at this roll it just this is the kind of stuff that kids love so it's oh, it's yeah. a strip effectively of yeah. of fruit jelly or almost fruit leather almost i guess yeah, this one is a bit that's what it looks like yeah and you have the also the the ones that are more not a bar but it's a strip as well and uh, what i really like packaging wise too if we don't talk about the product itself but on the shelf is absolutely stand out and kids would love that but mm. adult as well i mean it's a they're it's really a, bright 
yeah, very bright, uh, looks amazing on the shelf. And um, and the the flavor uh, are you know very different, very fun. I have uh, I old right now the apple pear blueberry, and they're easy to chew because a lot of strips like that. The problem is, I, I, it's kind of a never ending chewing session. Yeah, uh, these <laughs> ones just like <laughs> the try- leather really suits those. <laughs> exactly, <ones. laughs> have your strip of leather. This is so good. No, they, <laughs> these ones are actually uh, melt very well in your mouth, mm-hmm. um, chew easily, um, and for those who don't like fruit, even add. I mean, they don't like to eat fruits. Uh, it's a good way to get that the intake nutrition as well. From it too, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So kudos to them. I mean, that's awesome. Well, and my kids are always, when we go grocery shopping, they're always seeing the fruit roll-ups and all the things along those yeah. lines. And mm-hmm. I'm never really interested in picking those up. But this is such a great alternative. And my kids have tried them. They love them. And again, for those who uh, work out or travel, yeah, it's if you want, you know, getting your carbs in, it's easy. And to travel, I mean, at the airport, that flies in very easily. Um, so, yeah, again, uh, very good product here. We're very excited about that brand. Yeah, you'll have to check it out. Well, that was another really fun interview. So thanks to everybody for joining us. We certainly still want your feedback. So let us know what you want to hear, what you like, what you don't like. You mm-hmm. can email us at marketing at purelife.com. You can get at us and follow us uh, on Insta, Pure Life Health Products LP, or myself at Erin G. Macklin. And JD underscore Girl Power. And join us next week uh, for a special episode where we're going to have Matthew James, our CEO and president at Purity Life. Someone you know quite well. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming.